This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Now, a while ago I started doing a bunch of videos that were, um, you know, about the, my music collection and, and that kind of thing. And it was usually, you know, five great albums if you're in this kind of mood or that kind of mood or whatever. And the hardest part about doing those videos was the editing process, because to be honest, I can sit and blether on for, oh, well, till the cows come home about each individual album on a list. And, you know, the, the video ends up being, you know, kind of 45 minutes to an hour long, and I've got to edit it down to, you know, um, 15 minutes or thereabouts. And I thought, well, why don't I just do a single video, an individual video per album? And that's what we're going to do today in this new series of videos entitled Why I Love This Album. And the one we're talking about today is this one, The Extremist by Joe Satriani. I don't think he's ever recorded a better album than this. Um, you know, I got into him uh, round about 87, I think, when Surfing with the Alien came out. That's a great album. I won't have a word said against it. Um, but it was recorded, um, you know, using MIDI programmed drums in, you know, 1986-87 uh, on a shoestring budget. And that does kind of show a little bit in places. Well, quite a lot, actually. But the album was a surprising hit. Uh, which meant that for his next um, trip to the studio, he had a bigger budget. Um, and the album that came out of that was, of course, Flying in a Blue Dream. But that suffered from a common problem, um, you know, with albums of that um, early 90s era, which was it was when the CD was taking over as the dominant format for album releases. And there were a lot of albums back then, On Every Streets by Dire Straits, there's another one, um, where because the CD as a format could hold 75 minutes worth of music, record companies or producers or whoever, someone in the corridors of power decided, well, we need 75 minutes worth of music for the album. And a lot of albums that came out then I just felt were a bit bloated and there, were f there was just too much filler in there. And I think... Flying in a Blue Dream did suffer from that a little bit. Um, I've got a, a version of the album that I've edited down to like, you know, kind of, I always think of an album as, you know, being something that fits on one side of a C90 cassette. Of course, everybody under the age of 40 is going, what? Um, but, you know, about 45 minutes is, is, or 40 to 45 minutes is, you know, a happy length for an album for me. But by the time we got to The Extremist, we had, the production values, um, you know, a fantastic production courtesy of mainly of, um, I think it was Andy Johns with a little bit of input from John Cunaberti. Um, and you had, uh, Matt and Greg Bissonette, the rhythm section from Dave, Lu Dave Lee Roth's band, you know, absolutely stellar musicians. And of course, Joe himself. And the album for me is just utter gold. There is not a track on it that you ever need to skip past. So what I'm going to do today is run through a few highlights, personal highlights, things that I enjoy about the album, things that I just kind of, that, that stick in my mind, songs that are tunes that when I think of those tunes, it makes me want to go and put the whole album on and listen to it. So we start off with the opening track, Friends. I'm just referring to some notes here. Um, it's one of those melodies that is so simple, anybody could have written it. It's a simple, beautiful melody. Melody. It's full of celebratory joyfulness. Um, you, you can't listen to this track and be in a bad mood. It's a bit like Eric Johnson's Cliffs of Dover. It manages to combine, you know, utterly jaw-dropping, uh, shredding guitar technique with tunefulness and melody and emotion. And then we move on to the title track, The Extremist. Now, on this track, Joe really kind of gets his heavy trousers on and let's rip with um, a, a riff that is straight out of the Jimmy Page playbook. And then you come in with the melody and it's just pure 
bluesy question and answer phrasing but you know kind of on steroids and th that really is for me one of the things that um attracted me to, to Joe's playing way back in the 80s when I went and uh, first heard I think it was the crush of love on one of those little uh, flexi disc things that you got with uh, a guitar magazine you know it's a little kind of record that came printed on a page in the magazine um it was shredding instrumental guitar that wasn't doing that whole kind of sweet picking neoclassical kind of um ingve kind of thing which was just you know it seemed to be if you were into instrumental rock guitar back in the in the mid 80s that was the only show in town and you know along comes this guy uh satriani and he's playing kind of turbocharged blues licks and as a blues enthusiast myself that really kind of rang a bell with me and you know that's why uh, that's what initially got me into his um into his music and you know that is as i say it's it's a led zeppelin-ish riff this track the extremist with you know kind of bluesy phrasing and you know as I say, it's Shred plus Blues. That's why I love his playing. Then the third track in um, is a rather dark and foreboding uh, cut called War. Now, this was round about the time of the uh, whole kind of uh, Desert Storm thing. And um, it's got that sort of Eastern Phrygian kind of thing going on. It's dark and it's disturbing and it's spine tingling. But my mother, bless her, when she was alive, she used to uh, absolutely love it. Um, she actually said one time, do you know what, our John? Because that was my name to my mother, our John. She said, do you know what, our John? That sounds like something Wilson, Keppel and Betty would have danced to. Yeah, Google them. Um, but, you know, it's it's tuneful. Um, it's not particularly bluesy. You know, he doesn't get, have his blues trousers on on every, uh, on every track on the album. But it's tuneful and jaw-dropping technique incredible production values like the whole rest of the album and you know it's just the whole package melodic tuneful well played beautifully produced uh instrumental melodic shreddy guitar and uh, it does send a shiver down my spine that one now the real standout track on the album for me is the big ballad it's called crying and the staggering thing about this is that listen to uh, i've linked to the album in the description below okay so listen to that track especially that entire lead guitar performance is one take first take that's it joe was just doing um basically a guide guitar track uh he wasn't even plugged into his usual rig he was plugged into a cheap little zoom digital effects pedal it might have even been do you remember that zoom kind of effects processor that used to kind of hang on your guitar strap it was i think it might have even been one of those and um you know the producer andy johns just kind of took a listen to this performance and said that's the take that's going on the album. Uh, don't worry about, you know, you have, you weren't playing through your usual rig. We're using that on the album. I'll fix it so that, you know, the sound quality is good enough. And it is just absolutely heart-rending, beautifully, achingly uh, melodic uh, guitar playing. Again, it's Satriani, so you've got like the whole twiddly-widdly-widdly stuff uh, going on, but it's tastefully done, and it's there to serve the overall melodic intent of the piece of music. Beautiful, beautiful track. Uh, moving on, uh, Summer Song. Now, this is kind of out of the same um kind of playbook as things like that th that you would have heard on uh, surfing with the alien um you, you can imagine that this was this wouldn't have sounded out of place on that album um melody once again takes center stage and you've got again it's a very bluesy track this um what have i written down here beautiful bluesy wire drenched foot tapping melodic shred well there you go that pretty much sums up everything that you need to know about that track um i'm always banging on in these uh, in lessons that i do either online here or you know to me students when you're soloing about the use of motifs and joe really does kind of um you know have a strong ear for creating just a bar or two bars of strong melody that kind of bring you in and you know he kind of gets your uh, attention with that and then he'll um 
develop it and evolve it and then kind of go off on tangents and keep coming back to it and you know scatter a bit of the old uh, legato shreddy tappy sort of stuff all over the place just for good measure but again in a tasteful manner one of the most beautiful tracks on the album i think is uh tears in the rain it's just one man one acoustic guitar some beautiful arpeggios and it all adds up to just one of the most heart-rending melodies you'll ever hear there's no shredding gymnastics it's just simple beautiful expressive music played on it i think it sounds like a nylon string classical guitar it's it's just gorgeous it really really is and then um another track called why uh this is where joe gets his funky trousers on and um it's got a little bit of a fusiony kind of vibe to it i guess um you know uh, a friend of mine when he heard it, he says that sounds like he's been listening to some larry carlton and it's a bit of a stretch but i can see where he's coming from when you hear that um it is, as I've said here in these notes that I've written, it encapsulates what the album is about. Play a strong melody, develop it, take the listener on a journey, throw in some jaw-dropping technique, but always serve the overall melodic and emo- emotional message the tune is trying to deliver. There is not a note out of place on that track. It's just, again, you listen to it and, um, you know, an hour later, after the first time you've heard it, it's a melody that's stuck in your head and you're humming it. And the final track on the album is called New Blues. Now, this starts off with a real slow burn, moody and smouldering, um, just as the band are kind of settling into the groove. I would be prepared to put my next month's takings on the fact that this track, you know, above all others, this was everybody in the studio kind of making eye contact, looking at each other and kind of feeling that vibe that's going back and forth. Um it's one of those, as I say, it, it's it's one of those tracks where you can feel the eye contact uh, between the musicians and the B section of the melody when it kind of it's it's kind of a little bluesy kind of um, question and answer thing, and then it just goes off on a tangent into this most beautifully expressive, um, you know, heart rending melody that does have shades of Gary Moore about it. I, I got to tell you, it does have that kind of feel for the B section melody and anything that's got uh, a little bit of Gary about it is, uh, is always a good thing in my book. And then the solo, the solo, which comes in at two minutes, 26 seconds, bookmark that time. Uh, for me, that is a strong, strong candidate for the best guitar solo that Joe Satriani has ever played. So there you go. Those are a few little highlights um, and thoughts that I have on why I love the Extremist album by Joe Satriani. If you haven't heard the album, please, I implore you, check it out. I've linked to it in the description. It is, you know, just utterly, utterly fantastic. As I say, even my my dear old mum when she was alive, she used to like it. And, you know, her favourite artist was Liberace. So there you go. You know, if a, if if it can appeal to a Liberace fan, I'm sure it can appeal to you. So there you go, folks. Uh, that's pretty much it for today. Hope you found this video reasonably entertaining. That is, after all, the point. Uh, hopefully you dis- discovered uh, some new music that you didn't uh, otherwise uh, have, uh, you know, a, a handle on. And if I've done that, well, I've done my job for today. Hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you have, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so and why not give me a like while you're at it if you want to support the channel all the links are in the description uh thank you so much if you're already doing that and thank you in advance if you're thinking about doing it but for now that's pretty much it for today folks um i look forward to seeing you all again next time look after yourselves stay well stay safe and above all stay sane bye for now (laughs)